Hey. <laughs> My name's Cato. I'm a professor of theater at the University of Central Oklahoma. <laughs> and I want to be a clown. <laughs> but, but not the kind of tiny kind of clown you'd normally think of, like a circus clown with big floppy red shoes and a flower that like squirts water out and stuck in a VW bug with a bunch of other clowns. I want to be a different kind of clown, a special clown. The kind of clown that we all have inside us. It's this inner clown. Here, do me a favor. Um, open your eyes really wide and put your fingers right where your jaw kind of hinges right there and just, just rake down your jaw a little bit. Relax that muscle. Open your eyes. Open your mouth and just, just look at me. <laughs> and say, hey. Hey. <laughs> and I look at somebody else. So look at somebody you're sitting by. Open your eyes, open your mouth, and say, say, hey. <laughs> hey. Hey. See, so we all have this clown inside of us. So I want to talk about, like, calling out that clown. Because when we call out that clown, we can access three really important things. The first is uh, imagination. We're all born with the ability to imagine, with the power to make believe. Now think about it. Think about it. you're a little kid, you're standing out in your backyard and you get like a bath towel from the linen closet, you tie it around your neck, but it's not a towel anymore. It's a cape. And you're not a little kid anymore. You're a superhero. And you take off and you fly. <laughs> all around your backyard, and you believe it. You can fly. I look at my brother and I. When Star, War, Star Wars came out, I mean, the movie blew our minds. We got all the action figures. We would set up these huge, huge, elaborate battles in a galaxy far, far away. And we would play, and we would just believe it, like, Luke. Use the force. <laughs> like for hours, we just believed in my daughter when my daughter was three. She had an imaginary friend. Raise your hand if you had an imaginary friend. My daughter had an imaginary friend. They'd go everywhere together. They'd play, she'd go in her room and shut the door and I would eavesdrop, I would put my ear against my daughter's door and listen to her have these conversations and these, play these games and tell these secrets to her imaginary friend. I would just stand there with, uh, with amazement because she believed her friend was real. Somewhere around five years old, she was getting ready to go to school and her friend went away. Why'd she go away? Where'd she go? See, the clown allows us to rekindle, to reignite that power of imagination. Second is empathy. Now, I have a favorite TED Talk, and I thought, what better place to credit and proclaim my favorite TED Talk than at a TED Talk? It makes sense, as it does to me. Brene Brown. Yes, she talks about, among other things, the power of empathy. It's beautiful, like 22 million hits. But she gives this really cool distinction of empathy between sympathy and empathy, and it, it looks something like this. All credit to Brene. So you're walking down the street, and you're on your cell phone, and you're checking your Pinterest or whatever it is we check and there's a big hole there and in the hole is a deep dark cave and down that cave is a cavern and down the cavern is a person and all of a sudden you hear this voice and this person's like hey it's me I'm down here and I'm in this 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 cavern help and the person with sympathy is walking by and stops and looks and looks and goes 
Ooh, that is bad. <laughs> I feel bad for you. I hope you're okay. I, uh, I, I, I gotta take this call. Good luck with that. Keeps on walking. The person with empathy. The person with empathy is walking down the street and they hear this voice from down the hole, down the cavern. Hey, it's me. I'm down here stuck in this, this cavern. Help. The person with empathy stops, looks down. Says, hey. Hey. I see you. I know what it's like. I've been there, I'm coming down, and we'll figure this thing out together. You see, empathy, the ability, and more importantly, the willingness to look at people and understand, to try and understand them, their, their, their point of view, their perspective, their worldview in order to better understand them and ourselves. So important. And the clown, the clown, I mean, that, 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 that's where he lives. You have to have that empathy. Third is vulnerability. The clown asks us to be vulnerable, but it's not easy. In fact, it's difficult. But let me clarify something. Vulnerability is not a weakness. Vulnerability is not some kind of character flaw. Vulnerability is not something you save when, you, uh, when you're all alone in your room and you pull the shades and lock the door and you're just vulnerable when you're, when, when you're, you're safe. Vulnerability is strength. Vulnerability is courage. Vulnerability is the pathway to our most authentic selves. But so often we choose not to go there. Why don't we want to go there? I believe we don't want to go there because we are afraid. We have a fear of failure, a fear of failure. But what I know what I know is that the clown, my clown, your clown, all of ours, stands there with this wonderful childlike imagination, with empathy, with vulnerability, and looks at that fear, opens its eyes and its mouth, and just steps in, present in the moment, imagine. Imagine if we lived like that. Not just at school, not just in our office, not just at home, but imagine if we lived our lives like that. I'm a professor. I have a PhD. I'm supposed to be smart a master of my discipline and my craft, and all that's good. But what I want to be, what I want to be is a clown. I want to be the kind of person who lets my imagination run wild. I want to be the kind of person who looks at my friends and my, and my students and my family with empathy. I want to be the kind of person who is not afraid to be vulnerable in spite of my fear of failure, in spite of my fear of embarrassment. I have to let, let those three things lead me. Imagination, empathy, and vulnerability lead me through my life. Then I can become a clown. Open your eyes really wide. Open your mouth and smile a little bit. And look at me and say, hey. Hey.
My name's Cato. And thanks for letting me talk.